about 6.17 and time now for What's Trending. A prototype of a flying car successfully completed its first inner city flight between two Slovak airports. The prototype called Air Car can transform itself from a road vehicle to a plane in under three minutes by extending its foldable wings and retractable tail. And that's according to the car designers. On Monday, it took off from Nitra Airport in western Slovakia and landed 35 minutes later in the capital Bratislava, 46 miles away. Klein Vision, the company that developed the prototype, said the car it was the car's 142nd successful landing. Klein Vision said the air car has completed over 40 hours of test flights so far, and the car has flown at 8,200 feet and reached a maximum cruising speed of 118 miles per hour. Aircar's second prototype is expected to reach a cruise speed of 186 miles per hour and have a range of 620 miles. You guys, this thing looks so cool. Like, I think we've talked about a flying car in the past out of Japan. They kind of looked, uh, you know, not really like a car at all. Um, this thing has the body of a car, and, you know, obviously it's going to have to look a little bit like a plane or something to get up in the air. Uh, but it looks awesome. I think, you know, th this would be the, the ultimate flex, right? You roll up in this car, and everyone's like, oh, what a cool car. You know, that's so awesome. Then you, you know get the wings out and then uh, you take off, right? Now, I think one day just to be able to see the, this happening would be unreal and to be like a, a, uh, a normal thing, you yeah. know? And I don't think it's too far out in the future, which is crazy to think about. No, obviously not since they're already, you know, surpassing that. I mm -hmm. mean, it's really crazy to think about. I mean, whenever you would tell me something about a flying car, I think about something in a movie or, you right. know, Fast and Furious, you know, something like yeah. that. But um, this is a really big milestone, and I, I don't know if I would want to get in it, mm -hmm. but I would love to see it and then, you know, just wait maybe like 20 years after. Or something. <laughs> yeah, decades ago, I mean, this is something you would only see in cartoons, right? And then yeah. here you go, and now it's starting to become real life. And like you said, Sierra, I give it another 20 years or so, and who knows, maybe these, these might be the primary cars on the roads, and who knows where it might go from there. It might, it'll be easy to take off again. I hope we don't put airports out of business with that, but <laughs> what do you guys think? Do you think airports will be fine from this? I, I think so. Yeah. I have a feeling that, you know, to get your hands on one of these vehicles, uh, it's going to be a lot of money and probably oh to, God, to yeah. keep operating it, the fuel you're going to need for it, probably special. So I think you're going to have to be in the uh, top percent to be able to, uh, yeah. to, to get one of those things, at least in the near future. Yeah. Well, speaking of taking off, a French astronaut has showed off his cooking skills in space. A video posted on social media showed a piece of tortilla with strawberries stuck on a spread of chocolate floating in the International Space Station. Thomas Pesquet, the first French commander of the ISS, wrote in a post, my crewmates were very disappointed that my cooking skills are close to zero. Shame on a Frenchman. Pesquet added, here's my best culinary creation so far with strawberries and chocolate. And please disregard that the crepe is actually a tortilla who are you to judge? <laughs> this getting four uh, NASA astronauts began their six month mission back in April. I think that's really, really funny. Um, you know, look, the, the poor guy tried, right? Yeah. You know, and, and yeah. how much can you expect in space, first of all? I mean, I know they usually have, you know, like things with paste or the dry foods. Yeah. So, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's doing good there. Um, you know, yeah. he might want something a little more nutritional eventually <laughs> and not, you know, load up on the, uh, the Nutella and, and strawberries <laughs> crazy diet, but I think this is really cute. Though. Yeah, I, I think it's cute. Uh, I think, it, you know, probably pretty tasty as well, even with the tortilla there, but uh, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but so something about seeing it float around like that is just really funny to me. Just like, Why? <laughs> I don't know, it's like a, a a, a makeshift crepe just floating oh. around <laughs> like aimlessly, kind of just very funny. <laughs> yeah, just free falling in outer space. That's kind of as that's what the ISS does it's continuously in that free fall with the Earth's orbit there. So really fascinating. You took the words right out of my mouth there, Peter. I was mm. like, hey, it's just kind of floating around. I mean, the stuff we see on the International Space Station, but that's always really cool to really see that too. But bringing it back to Earth, if you have any friends on Facebook from the Upper Peninsula, then you may have seen this video. I know I have seen it several times. Let's show you it. Here we, we see a video courtesy of our affiliate in Marquette, Michigan, of a 200-foot cliff at Pitcher Rocks National Lake Shore in Michigan break off and fall into Lake Superior. Those filming the collapse on the pontoon boat said it resulted in waves 10 to 12 feet high. No one was injured as the boat was able to successfully flow through on the waves. And look at that video. That is just really cool to just really see. This, I mean... 
you're seeing nature just change right before your eyes with this big uh, collapse of rocks there. I mean, you normally, I mean, you go to these parks all the time and you see and you learn about like what it looked like way back when and it's just casually kind of, I guess, decomposing is probably the right word to use. And then there it is, that big kind of collapse right there to show in the video again there. And just wow. look at that. I, I'm almost kind of wondering what's finally, was that final to just get it to go. Right, and so cool that they were able to be there, uh, you know, when it happened to capture that on video. So glad that everyone was okay and at a safe distance. But you're right, you never know when something like that's gonna happen, Devin. And this isn't the first time I saw, um, you know, they reported, this TV station reported that it happened uh, previously in, a, in an area close to there. But, um, you know, unfortunately we can't show you the video with sound, but um, for the adults out there, they should go check it out. The, the guy filming this was, was very enthusiastic and yelling at, uh, at Brad to get out of the way Hey Brad, get out of the way. This is so funny. Um, oh uh, you goodness. should check it out. Yeah, yeah, I would have probably been that guy screaming too, <laughs> even though we were, you know, at like a good distance. I would have yeah. been very uh, fascinated with that too. So. Yeah, I mean, it's just so cool. You don't usually see someone like that. Usually, you, I mean, stuff happens and usually there's probably nobody there or just... Mm -hmm. It's just one of those things where it's just so cool they had you just had the camera just rolling at the right time. So there had to have been some warning signs there to get, tell that person to start filming or something. Who knows before that happened?